to go through the in the chapter four in the Google Classroom. I have actually shared with you uh, Canvas chapter four. Can you see that? Can you see? Yes, doctor. Yes, Is doctor. Is it clear? Uh, quite yes. clear. All right. Yes. All right. So okay, I will just try this. Stupid. Okay. Right, so in what we have under chapter four, right? Remember that I also, uh, I told you that is everything goes back to asset equals to liabilities plus honors equity. All right, so whenever there's an increase, you're going to debit your asset accounts, but you are going to credit your liability or honors equity. But whenever there's a decrease, then asset will be credited, but liabilities and honors equity decrease means that it's a debit entry. So that principle is always the same all right accounting that is the principle right you don't have to change because you just stick to that principle of the debit and credit entry so whenever you say that uh, whether it's a debit or credit you go back what is it is it an asset debit or honest equity is that an increase or is that a decrease all right uh remember that in uh, in the form of honest equity right so we have your share capital all right, share capital is a credit entry. So whenever there's a share capital invested by the owners, you're going to credit the share capital accounts. All right, so debit, whether it's a cash or it could be in terms of the motor vehicle or whatever contributed by the share, by the owners, all right? So credit your share capital. Why? Because share capital is part of owner's equity. So share capital increase owner's equity. So that's why it's a credit entry. Similarly, all right, under honest equity, what we have is a revenue, all right? So revenue increases your honest equity. That's why revenue, the entry is always on the credit side. So what is a revenue, all right? So to make it simple for you, all right, whenever a business, all right, remember that there are two types of business, business that provides services and business that sells goods, all right? So if the business is to provide services, then whenever they perform their services, then you generate revenue. So whenever there's a revenue, you're going to credit the account, right? Is that clear? Right, so whenever you have revenue, you credit the account. So what is debited? So if you perform your services or when you sell your good and you do actually receive cash for the services or for the goods that you sold right so you debit your, your cash all right so whenever there's a revenue debit your cash credit your revenue accounts yeah so again revenue whether it's a services or when you sell your goods remember that right so you debit your cash and credit your revenue accounts but expenses on the other hand right is a something that reduce your honest equity so when you spend or when you make payment for your expenses or when you incur expenses right so that reduces your honest equity remember oe is a credit right it's a credit nature so anything that reduce your oe then it has to be debited so when the johan asked me when Johan asked me why you debit your expenses accounts, because expense reduce your honest equity. That's why the nature of expense is a debit entry. So when I say that when I make payment for any expenditure, for example, I make payment for my rental expense, right? So I make payment, of course, my cash is out, right? But the entry would be debit your rental expense, credit your cash. Why you debit your rental expense? Because expenses reduce your honest equity. That's why the nature of expenses, any expenses that you have, you're going to debit the expense, right? Whether you, when you make, when you incur expenses and when you make payment for the expenditure, of course, you have to credit your cash. Why you credit your cash? Because cash reduces what cost will you make payment for the expenditure. Okay, right? 
So again, revenue earned, we call it as a revenue earned when you perform service and when you sell your goods. Expenses, we call it as expenses incurred. All right, revenue earned, expenditure incurred. All right, and revenue is always on credit side and expenditure is on the debit. So if ever, for example, you pay for your wages or you have your utilities or any of your insurance expenditure, then you're going to debit that expenditure account, credit your cash. But if it's a revenue, you debit your cash. Why? Because when you sell goods or when you perform services, your client will have to pay you. So you debit your cash, right? And credit your revenue account. So is that clear so far? We yes, we clear, huh? All right. So we're assuming here now is that all these transactions, you, when you perform your services or when you sell goods, immediately you get cash. So that's why you debit your cash. Right? Or when you incur expenditure, you immediately, whenever you have wages, you pay directly your wages immediately. All right? Whenever you incur your expenditure, all right, you're going to credit your cash immediately. But is that the always the case? Is that always the case in business? Whenever you have you perform services, you get cash immediately. Whenever you incur your expenditure, you immediately make payment. No, this no. not this. No. So what happened actually in most of the time? You have expense payable and revenue receivables. Right? Expenditure maybe means that you incur, but you don't pay that immediately. Especially with wages, all right? You have your employees that have performed their, their job, all right? Normally, you pay them not immediately, but you pay them at the end of the month, all right? So, whatever the days that they have actually worked, all right, it's a, it becomes a payable to you because why you're going to pay them later, all right? But revenue, for example, when you sell your goods, but then your client say that, I don't have cash now, I will pay you later. All right, so what we have is that on accounts, all right, sales on accounts. So it means that you don't receive cash now, but you are going to receive your cash later. So when you receive that later, that's why when you have a revenue, you have revenue on account, then you have your accounts receivable, right? But if you're talking about your wages, Right, so you don't pay your wage now, but the expenditure is already incurred. All right, then you have your debit, your expense. You are, you are going to credit your wages payable. You get that? Right, so it could be means that cash, if you receive cash now, but if you don't receive cash now, you're going to receive that later. So it's going to be receivable. But talking about payment, if you don't pay now, you're going to pay that later. So you're going to be a payable. Is that clear? All right. So that's why in accounting, we have a concept of what we call accrual accounting. Right? So it means that accrual accounting is a, a principle where we say that we are going to recognize your expenditure whenever it's incurred not when you pay all right whenever incurred you're going to recognize your expenditure but we're talking about revenue we're going to recognize your revenue when it's earned all right so when is the earned of revenue if you're talking about services so you you earn your revenue when you have performed the services but if you're talking about when you sell your goods you earn your revenue when you deliver goods to your customers, all right? Whether you receive cash or not, or whether you make payment, it does not matter. But you recognize your revenue and also your expense, expenditure. Revenue when it's earned, expenditure when it's incurred. Whether you receive cash or not, if you receive cash, then you are going to debit your cash or credit your cash accordingly. But if you do not receive cash, then that's how you're going to recognize that as your receivable. All right. For example, here we have, you have generate, a, earn a revenue, 
But then because you don't receive cash immediately, you open up your accounts receivable. Right? And when later, for example, in this case, example is that uh, on 3rd of November, I have earned a revenue of 10,000. But I, I do not receive cash yet. It's on account. Right? Sales on account. So when you say that it's on account, it means that the customer will pay you later. So on the 3rd of November, you are going to create a debit account receivable, credit your revenue account. Is that clear? Yes, so far. Okay. All right. Let's assume that on the following day, all right, on the 4th of November, the same customer now make payment. All right? So when they make payment, it means that you receive cash. So when you receive cash, you're going to debit your cash of 10,000. So when the same customer make payment of the 10,000, do you have to still have the account receivable? You have to adjust. It means that you have to credit your account receivable of the same amount. So if initially you debit your account receivable, and on the 4th of November, you credit your account receivable of the same amount, 10000 and 10000 So at the end of the day, do you still have a balance of account receivable? No. No more, right? Why? Because you have credited your accounts receivable. Why? Because you actually have received payment from your account receivable. So there's no more amount due, right? But if, for example, on the 4th of November, your account receivable payment is only 8000 right so it means that you're going to debit your cash 8000 credit account receivable 8000 it means that at the end of the day you still have a balance of 2000 does that make sense yes okay. yes <clears throat> right uh, on the fourth you collect cash from your account receivable All right what about your expenditure so it's the same Right, so if your expenditure, assuming that you have uh, uh, as a wages expenditure on the 15th of October, all right, so you incur the expense on 15th of October, then you're going to debit your wages expenditure, right? But you don't pay them yet, right? So that's why you're going to credit your wages payable. And when it's a payable, you know that it's a liability. So that's why, in other words, that's why the account is credited because it's a liability. Is that clear so far? Yes. Okay. But yes. then, all right, when there's a payment later, so that's what we call adjusting entries, right? The adjustment means that when there's a payment, for example, here on the 26th of October, you make payment of the wages, right? How much you make payment in this case when you first created on 15 October, you created a wages of 1,000. But 26th of October, you pay wages of 500 only. So when you make payment, of course, you have to credit your cash 500. But don't forget, all right, your debit, your wages payable now reduces. All right, that's why you debit your wages payable. How much? Only 500. Why? Because you only make payment of 500. It means that at the end of the day, you still have a balance in your wages payable? Yes. Yes, you still have 500 which is not yet paid. So that balance will still be available in your financial statement. Yeah, because that amount has not yet paid at the end of the month, for example. Yeah. So when I say that on the 15th of October, you have to recognize the expenditure. But when you make payment, then you have to adjust the entries. Adjustment here in on the wages uh, payable, where you initially it was 1,000, but now you have to make adjusting entries because there's a payment on the liability. So now your liability reduces. Okay? Right. Yes. And then, oh yeah, question? So far, okay. So what is that expected from you from these journal entries is that whenever there's an adjusting entries, then you have to put that into a journal, right? And then it has to be reflected in your 
ledger and then you are coming out with the adjusted uh, amount of balances. Next is that, all right, when we have convert your asset to an, an expenditure, all right? So this is actually uh, what is actually a business transaction, which is the common one, all right? So uh, how many of you have an insurance? Take your insurance. All of us. Yeah. So Hakim, how does insurance work? Uh, insurance. You pay insurance now. I will receive the service later. You say receive the service later. What kind of service there? That depends on say types of insurance. All right. So let's say, for example, okay, let's make it very simple, all right? So how does it work is that you, when a company, all right, take up an insurance, right? So let's say that is for a fire insurance, okay? So they have a premise, they have a premises, and then they, they pay insurance for fire. In case there is a fire, all right, it means that yeah, the building is actually insured. So what happens is that when you pay for your insurance, you will have a time period. So it means that, for example, let's say that the insurance is for a one-year period, right? Uh, if the insurance is from 1st January until 31st of December, so you're going to pay your insurance from the very beginning, right? In order for you to be insured for one year, you have to make payment now. Right, it's not that when you actually involve the fire that only you want to buy insurance, so it doesn't work like that. All right, insurance you have to pay now in order for you to be insured or to be guaranteed for a period. Right, so what happens is that when you have an insurance, you pay now, right, and this, uh, whatever that you make payment is yours for a period. So let's say for one year, all right, so. When you have that, it means that you pay now for a period of one year. So what you have paid now is what we call prepaid insurance. Right? Why is it called prepaid? Because you have made payment in advance for the insurance of one year. All right? But, for example, if you make payment of January, so the coverage is until 31st of December. So when you have January, you make payment, let's say, lah. Uh, 12,000. So, assuming that 12,000 for 12 months, so the insurance payment is actually 1,000 per month. All right? Or what we call insurance expense is 1,000 per month. But you have made payment of 12,000 beginning of January. So, when it comes to February, you have to recognize the first month insurance. It's already recognized as an expenditure already. Right, so that's what happened is that we are going to, when you make payment of insurance, all right, when you say that it's a prepaid insurance, so any ex, uh, expenditure that you pay in advance is your asset. Right, take note of that. Expenditure that you pay in advance is an asset. Right, for example, insurance is an expenditure. But because you make payment in advance for the whole year, right, then the insurance is what we call prepaid insurance. It's an asset. So as time goes by, you are going to recognize the portion of the asset that has to be converted to an expenditure. Right? So that's what we call conversion. Right? So what happened is that, for example, on 1st of January, I purchased an insurance of 12,000 ringgit, right? Uh, when it comes, so 12,000 ringgit is for one year. So I debit prepaid insurance and credit cash because I make payment for the prepaid insurance amounting to 12,000. All right, so this is the beginning of the, of the year. So when it comes to the second month, so for one, in this case, 12,000 divided by 12 is 1,200 per month, right? And then, so when you have passed your first month, remember this one is your asset. Now you have no more 12,000 asset because why? Your asset now has reduced, right? Because why? It's no longer 12,000. It's already become 11,000. Why? Because you have to convert the asset, the prepaid insurance here. It's no longer 12,000. Now 
it has expired. One month expired already. How much expired? One thousand two hundred. So when you have to do that, it means that you're going to credit your prepaid insurance here, right? So how much you're going to credit? You're going to recognize that as an expenditure because it's an insurance expense. 1200 and this is actually to be uh take up from your prepaid insurance yeah so this is what we call the the adjusting entries right so it means that uh, later you see that normally what is in your financial position you have you may have a prepaid insurance or you may have any other prepayment Right means that prepaid or prepayment is in expenditure that you make payment in advance, right? So it's an asset to you, but you when it becomes when it expires, then you have to recognize the asset, convert that to be an expenditure. So similarly here, so from an insurance from a prepaid insurance which is an asset, you are going to recognize the insurance expenditure for the first month. Right, so that's how you do the adjusting entries. Similarly, all right, we do have in the uh, office supplies. Right, so office supply means that the company will buy uh, inventories. Uh, sorry, not inventory. Uh, stationaries in bulk. Yeah, for example. But over the time, all right, because the office supplies is for the use of the the operating uh, use of the business. Right, so over time, your supplies. Initially, when you purchase office supplies, it's an asset. Yeah, so it's an asset. So you're going to debit your asset and credit your cash or maybe accounts payable. Depends whether you pay cash or you, you purchase your supplies on account. But as time goes by, all right, you have to recognize how much of these supplies now becomes an expenditure. Right, so you're going to debit your operating supplies, but in this case, it's no longer an asset. You're going to recognize expenditure incurred for the office supplies. All right. And then you're going to credit. So from the asset here, how much is to be reduced? That's why you credit. Yeah. You credit your all operating supplies. Uh, what else? Uh, here. All right. And the third one uh, is that what is very important is that when you have your depreciation, have you heard of depreciation before? Yes. What is it then? Something depreciation is depreciate in value, right? So we are always refer this depreciation to your uh, assets. In this case, yeah. the asset refer to the non-current asset. You are talking about your building, your machine, your equipment, all these are your assets. There's only one asset which do not depreciate. Anyone? Yes. What is land. that? Land. land. Yeah. Whenever you have land, you do not give depreciation to your land. Why? Because land most likely or most of the time land appreciate in value right so that's why there's no depreciation for land but other assets for example your motor vehicle your building all right all this depreciates over time so when you purchase a building all right for example you purchase a building that costs you in this case uh, a motor vehicle for example you purchase a motor vehicle which is an asset Right, that costs you ten thousand ringgit. So you debit your motor vehicle, but you credit or you you credit your cash or maybe your accounts payable of ten thousand. Right, understand this when you when you purchase your motor vehicle. But over time, let's say that let's say it's just one year period. Right, the law says that you have to give a depreciation to your asset. So how you're going to compute a depreciation? There are many ways, nah. Right, so for example, the most common that we are going to use is the straight line basis. It means that, for example, if the cost of the motor vehicle is 10,000, all right, and we are going to use a straight line basis where it says that it's going to be used for a 10 year period. Right, so it means that if the cost is 10,000, you are going to divide the cost over 10 years period, which is at 1,000 ringgit. What is that? What does that mean? It means that for 10,000 uh, ringgit motor vehicle, 
every year, all right, the motor vehicle will depreciate by 1,000. 1,000. Come to next year, another 1,000. So the value of the motor vehicle depreciates, right? The value, right? So you have to recognize no longer, okay, after three years, right, the value of the motor vehicle is no longer 10,000 ringgit. It will only be 7,000. Why? Because three years, it depreciates 3,000 ringgit already, right? So the value of the motor vehicle in this case, we call it as a net book value, right? So the net book value is your cost minus your depreciation. <clears throat> Uh, hold on. Where is it? Okay. So, you know, for your cost, it means that uh, how to compute your depreciation? Normally, uh, you only use a straight line basis, which is the cost is divided by the number of years. Then you know what is the depreciation per year. So, once you have your depreciation per year, then you have to allocate. Lah. For example, while you purchase your motor vehicle at the beginning of the year, it means that at the end of the year, you're going to you allocate a depreciation of 1,000 ringgit. Why 1,000 ringgit? Because that is the depreciation rate for the motor vehicle, right? So in other words, it's a 10%. So how are you going to record this depreciation, right? So whenever you have a depreciation of your asset, so you have to identify how much is the depreciation expense for the year. So once you have computed that, in this case, it's 1,000 per year, then, all right, you're going to debit the depreciation account of 1,000, all right? Depreciation here, anyone, why is it? It's a debit account. Why you debit your depreciation? No, because of value of expense. Because? It's expense. It's an expenditure, right? Depreciation is an expense. That's why it's debited. So if you debit your depreciation, right, there must some uh, uh, another account that has to be credited, right? So for accounting, right, they have created one account, which is what we call accumulated depreciation account. You get that? Accumulated depreciation account for motor vehicle so why is an accumulated depreciation so for each of your asset you're going to have accumulated depreciation so of course one year in this case you have depreciation of 1000 but if it's already in the third year anyone can uh, uh, can guess how much is the accumulated depreciation for the asset for three years. 3,000. 3,000. Why? You had the first year 1,000. The second year another 1,000. So the depreciation accumulated is already 2,000. When it comes to third year, you're going to debit another 1,000. And that 1,000 will also be credit, credited into your accumulated depreciation. So that's why it's called accumulated. All right. You accumulate the depreciation on the asset from the beginning to the current year, right? So in this case, you're going to credit 1,000. But remember that accumulated depreciation is an account means that you already have your opening balance, right? It could be 2,000 and this year you add another 1,000. So at the end of the period, you have a balance of 3,000 for this account, right? So accumulated depreciation is also known and it's, it is at a contra asset, right? So remember that this accumulation is for which asset? Motor vehicle. So motor vehicle is an asset. Accumulated depreciation of the motor vehicle is what we call a contra asset. What is a contra? Anyone can tell me? What do you understand by contra? Opposite. The opposite, right? So, in this case, if I say that asset, uh, if an asset has a debit entry, a contra asset will have a credit entry, right? So, that's why you see that here, accumulated depreciation is a credit entry. Why? Because accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So, I cannot say that it's an asset account. It's not an asset. It's a contra asset, right? So, that's why it's a credit entry, 
right? So, it's a balance sheet item. Later, you see that in your balance sheet item, right, you see how this accumulated depreciation is shown in the account or in the financial statements. So, it's not so far here. I show you here, you have statement of financial position. If for example, you have a motor vehicle, 10,000, then you minus, right? Accumulated depreciation in this case, because it's the first year, then you have accumulated depreciation of 1,000, right? So if you have a asset of 10,000, then you have accumulated of 1,000. So 10 minus 1 is 9,000. So what is this 9,000? We call it as an NBV. Anyone would like to suggest or guess what is NBV? What is NBV here? It's a net book value. Net book value. In other words, a net book value is your cost minus your accumulated depreciation. So what is the difference between cost and net book value? Cost means that the cost of the motor vehicle when you first purchase. Net book value is the value of the motor vehicle after taking into account your accumulated depreciation. Right? So as you can see that in your financial statement or in your statement of financial position, your motor vehicle values will always be 10,000. But if I were to say that next year, anyone can suggest what would be the net book value in the following year? 9,000. If you, oh No, this year is 9,000. What about 8, next 000. year? 8,000. 8, so what would, we, what would be different then in the following year? Right, for example, let's say this one is 2019. You have net book value of 9,000. 2020, net book value would be 8,000. But what will be your motor vehicle cost? Still 10,000. Still 10,000. But the accumulated depreciation now becomes 8,000. 2,000. 2, oh, 2, sorry. It becomes 2,000. 2, 2, so 10 minus 2, it becomes 8,000. Right? So in your financial position, you must always show your motor vehicle is always at cost. But then, all right, you minus your accumulated depreciation that it shows you the net book value. Is that clear? All right. So that is on your depreciation. So in your SOKI, all right, your depreciation expenditure, the 1,000 just now, remember you debit your expenditure. Where is your debit? Yeah, here. Debit your 1,000 here. Can you see this? It's an yes. expenditure. So, this expenditure will be reflected in your statement of uh, comprehensive income or what we call statement of your profit and loss. You have your revenue and under revenue, you have expenditure of depreciation 1,000, right? But the accumulated depreciation, it goes to your balance sheet item, right? So, if you make an adjustment for the year for your depreciation, Right, your average division in this case, you also have to add another 1,000, right? So later, we'll see how are we going to do or to reflect this in your statement of your financial position, right? Don't forget, whenever you have adjusting entries, you have to put in your depreciation here, right? Okay, now is 7.20. Is it Margaret already? Never mind. I just finish a, a bit more, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now the other adjustment that you have to do is that when you have a liability and then you recognize that your revenue, right? When you convert from a liability to a revenue, so what happens is that, right, in this example, when you create a liability, later you're going to recognize that liability as your revenue. So what happened here is that when you make sales, right, in your business, sometimes, right, uh, you receive cash from your customer for the services to be performed in the future. Okay, you receive cash from your customer 
but the services will only be performed in the future. In other words, your customer make payment in advance for the services to be performed in the future. Or customer make advance payment for the goods to be delivered in the future. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So, of course, it's very rare, not very rare, but it means that uh, unlikely customer wants to pay unless they they trust the 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 seller, all right? So they say that okay, I want to make an advance payment for the services or for the goods. So what happened is that when the customer make payment for the services that are going to be performed in the future, when you receive cash from your customer, do you think that you have to record the cash? Should you record the payment from your customer, cash that you receive? Yes or no? Yes, you have to record it. But you not still have to record the cash received. If you don't record your cash received, where the money? Are you going to hold the money? Is it yours? It's not. It's the business money. So you have to record the money cash comes in. All right. So you have to debit your cash because you receive the cash. But can you recognize the revenue? Have you performed the services? Have you delivered the goods in this case? Not yet. Not yet. So when you have not performed services or when you have not delivered the goods, but you have received cash, so what you have to recognize is that that's a liability now. Why? I have received cash for something which I have not earned. That's why we are going to open up a revenue account, but it's not yet a revenue. We call it as an unearned revenue. So an unearned revenue is a liability. Why? Because you have received cash, but you have not performed the services. You have received cash, but you have not delivered the goods. So you have to create an account, what we call unearned revenue. Why? Because it's a liability. That's why unearned revenue is a credit account. What's the difference between revenue and unearned revenue? Revenue is under honest equity and yes. under unearned revenue is under liability. Very good. Very good. But remember, both are credit entry. Right? So don't okay. get confused. Revenue is earned. That's why it's an honest equity. Credit, it increases your honest equity. But unearned revenue is a liability. But still, a liability is a credit entry. Right? So whenever you have received cash for something that you have not performed or you have not delivered, right, you're going to open up unearned revenue. Right? But later... Right? When you perform the services or when you have delivered the goods, then you are going to do adjustment on the liability. All right? So it means that you are going to debit your unearned revenue. No man. Why you debit your unearned revenue when you actually perform the, the services? No man? Yes, ma'am. Why you debit your unearned revenue now? Can you repeat it? When you when you why not here, ma'am? Hello? Yes. Can you repeat the question? Why now? All right, when you perform the services, right now the entry is that you debit your unearned revenue accounts, you credit your revenue account my question is why you debit your unearned revenue maybe because to expand my business again because to expand with expand is it an expense yes, what is an unearned revenue it's a liability Lib it's basically a liability which you had okay. taken so what happened when you debit your liability? What does it mean, debit liability? 
No, it means that I can say. Is the liability increase or decreases? Increases, I guess. Again? Increases. Increase? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hidayat, would you like to uh, comment on that? Um, <clears throat> we want to reduce the uh, un un uh, revenue amount. I can't hear you clearly. Hello? Hello? Yes. I Again? Again, eh? Hmm. Okay, we want to uh, reduce the unearned revenue amount. Okay, so you reduce that... unearned revenue. Why debit? Because we uh, got the revenue when we uh, deliver the services. Okay. So why you debit? Because now your unearned revenue decreases. Right? Because it decreases, that's why you debit. Why you debit? Because it's a liability, right? Unearned revenue is a liability. So when there's a decrease in unearned revenue, you debit the account. Why you credit revenue, OE? Because revenue here is your, now you recognize your revenue. Now only you earned your revenue. So when you earn your revenue, you credit your revenue account. Okay, Hidayat? Okay. Numan? Yes, ma'am. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. A little bit understand. Okay. Right. So if you look at here, right, the adjustment is that. So initially, remember that you receive cash from your unearned revenue, but now there's a payment. Oh, sorry. You receive cash, but now you recognize not all, but maybe in this case, it's only half of it. All right. Maybe you don't perform everything yet, but you have to recognize half of the services, or maybe you have not delivered all everything yet. So you recognize lah, your punya, or whatever it is. Lah, yeah. Okay. So that is all under adjustment. So let's break for prayer, Margaret prayer. And we come back at 8 o'clock. Is that okay? Thank you. Everybody. Yes. Okay, yes. Hold on. When you are ready for after your prayer, right? If you don't have anything else. I want you to look into the tutorial question in the Google Classroom. Uh, where's the tutorial chapter 4, right? This tutorial. Uh, we go through this tutorial together. And then we pay expenses. All right, we are going to do this question. Okay. After the month. After it, uh, we do this at eight o'clock. But if you're ready earlier, you can just go through the question first before our discussion. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, right. doctor. All right. So I will stop the recording now. Uh, inshallah, I'll see you again. Inshallah, at eight o'clock. Okay, doctor. Thank All you. Right. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. I will.